being under the influence of alcohol to have sex, that is a no-no. Yes, sometime last week, I was having this sensitive discussion with my friends. Like, we are deliberating on the different sex types. The ones that are way too risky and the one that tends to be more enjoyable. Do you understand? Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Eh? Yes. <laughs> okay, um, some of us actually opted for vaginal sex. Yeah, majority will always opt for that because it gets one to the climbers, like you know what I mean. And then um few people opted for anal sex. Reasons being that uh, this actually came from one of us. Reasons being that it protects her from unwanted pregnancy. Do you understand? Or well, that's her own belief. Why um some few people went for oral sex? Yes, and still one of the reasons is that it makes. I think this came from one person. It's not as if it's all of them that agreed on this like the lady was like it makes her feel intact owing to the fact that there is no penetration down there like it makes her feel like she's still a virgin while she goes about to enjoy her sexual life if you want to I talk to me talk to, talk to me direct yeah. don't go through the corners well everyone has different beliefs like everyone has different things that was for them there's different strokes for different folks and that is actually what gave rise to today's video yes in today's video i'm going to be discussing about preventive measures you have to adopt to avoid getting infected while you go about your sexual life <laughs> so guys before we dive into the main discussion of the day let's get to find out what hiv is all about yes i know i've defined hiv several times if you follow up my youtube videos you'll get to understand what hiv is all about but for the sake of the newbies that are watching this video for the first time i have to break it down for them continue hiv as the name implies it means human immunodeficiency virus do you understand like this is a virus that attacks the immune system unfortunately enough it happens to be that this virus attacks a particular cell in the body it's called the cd4 cells this cd4 cell is a cell that helps to fight against diseases and infections in the system you see this corny virus it sees no other cell in short i don't even want it to attack any cell but why must it be this CD4 cell that it will go and attack? So now imagine if the cell, if the soldier that is protecting your body is down, what happens? It will not give room for attackers to come into your territory. I said you cannot do me anything. That's why it's good. Whenever you feel like you've been exposed, it's always good for you to go and do your test and immediately get administered on your ALT medication. Even if you've not been exposed, it's always good for you to be aware of your HIV status. Since when them born you, since when I sabi you, now now you they talk something way good come up for this your mouth. Because if you're not being placed on medication, it gives room to all forms of diseases, including cancer, and it transgresses to ACE. <laughs> and that is the deadly aspect of it. So that's what HIV, that's the basis of HIV. So now, what are the body flus that helps in the quick transmission of this virus? Like, what are those boats? <laughs> what, what are those boat drivers, the tazifies, the keke drivers in the body that helps to transmit this virus sharp sharp? Two legs suspense, what it be that? It's not be juju be that. Talk up now. <laughs> we have blood, we have um, breast milk, we have um, preseminal fluid, we have vaginal fluid, we have rectal fluid, and we have the semen. Do you understand? Like, with the presence of these body fluids, the transmission of the virus is very very quick what? Give me that. so now the next question is how is this virus transmitted sexually hey this way let that car, let's move we're going to start from oral sex <sighs> someone's mind will not be like she didn't mention saliva so what is oral sex now doing with hiv transmission we are not informed to okay first of all what is oral sex oral sex that is um, the usage of your mouth to stimulate the genitals of your sexual partner do you understand so one thing with oral sex is that 
there are a lot of STDs and infections that are being transmitted through oral sex. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth is it is possible to have these stds in your mouth or throat after giving oral sex to a partner who has genital std do you understand it could be that the partner has um std in the vagina or just if it's for the guy in the genital area it is possible for you to get the std in your mouth or throat that is after giving oral sex to the person and it is also possible to have this std in your genital area after receiving oral sex from a partner who has std in the mouth or throat do you understand the way it works yes and it's also possible for you to have this std both in your mouth and in your genital area do you understand so the presence of these stds such as syphilis gonorrhea and the rest of them the presence of these stds now makes it for you to easily contact hiv do you understand the way it was that these stds pays way for hiv to come into your body that's if you have an unprotected sex with someone that is infected with hiv it is very very easy for you to contact the virus and the sad news about these stds is that most of them they have no symptoms so they can be in your body for as long as and you won't even know that you're infected with the std i appreciate as soon as i agree look we do this meeting that's why it's good whenever you feel that you've been exposed it's always good for you to go and do your test not just hiv test including stds test hey let me hear the test to, to deliver this, this so now how can you protect yourself from getting infected as you go about with your oral sex deliver us god as you deliver daniel from crocodile den first of all is use your condom correctly do you understand we have both female condom we have um male condom you should always ensure that you use it correctly and ensure that the condom is neither broken nor expired you have to take note of these two things that point good the second one we we'll have here is always use a dental dam yeah most of us might not know what dental dam is all about you can read more about it as i describe it on the screen and you can still make out your time to google about it and see the pictures clearly do you understand so that is it for oral sex and yes the most important one always know your sexual partner's health status it is good if you're the type that has multiple partners um you should go about knowing their status or whether still stick to one partner everything you're the weave matter the weave matter no i'm not going to tell you what to do but always ensure you do the right thing know your partner's health status it is your right so that is that for oral sex if there's any other preventive measures that i'm forgetting please don't forget to drop it at the comment section yes so um the next one we'll have here is vaginal sex we all know what vaginal sex is all about that is having sex through the vagina <laughs> Yes, I forgot to add just before we go to vaginal sex, there are certain chances that increases your risk of getting infected with these STDs during oral sex. Some of them include decayed tooth, bleeding gum, oral cancer, sores in the mouth or genitals, exposure to precom, and presence of stds yes so these factors increases your chances of getting stds during oral sex so i think we are now ready to move to vaginal sex let's go yes 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 vaginal sex we all know what vaginal sex is all about but let me not assume so vaginal sex is having sex through the vagina and it is possible for you to get hiv through vaginal sex when you have unprotected sex with someone who is infected with hiv do you understand if the sex is unprotected and if the person is infected with hiv there is every possibility that you would definitely get infected with the virus <laughs> why <laughs> yes because both blood and the um semen 
including the vaginal flu they all carry hiv remember at the beginning of this video i mentioned some body flus that helps in the easy transmission of the virus so the vaginal flu the blood and the semen helps in the quick transmission of this virus during vaginal sex do you understand so now what are the ways through which you protect yourself from getting infected during vaginal sex <laughs> i'll still come back to my usage of condom correctly and ensure that it is not broken nor expired and um the next one we'll have here is prep yes a lot of us must have heard about prep that is pre-exposure prophylaxis so should in case you you're not sure of your partner's health status or you have multiple partners or probably you have a partner that is infected with hiv and you yourself you're negative it is always ideal for you to be on your prep medication and always ensure to keep up to the directives of the medication do you understand just as your health um clinician has instructed you to take the medication always keep up to that and always be ready to assess your pep there is prep and there is pep pep is post exposure prophylaxis that is after so always be ready to assess it within 72 hours in case if there is any exposure probably because of the cells the condom broke or it slipped off you should always be ready to assess your pep within 72 hours <laughs> and last but not the least always ensure to know your partner's health status what? Do you mean that? yes i'm ringing it again always ensure to know your partner's health status i don't take it for granted for people that have multiple partners remember what i told you in the first video know how to go about it good luck <laughs> okay and i will now go to the last but not the least sex type of the day which is anal sex <laughs> so what is anal sex that is um having sex through the anal legion did i just mention legion why can't you speak correct english for once please having sex through the anal region <laughs> do you understand okay yes we say anal sex is way too risky when it comes to hiv transmission because we all know that the anal region is dry you, you the yellow, baby. like it's not as um, lubricated as a vagina that gets wet whenever the person is horny that place is always dry whether you're horny or you're not horny that place will definitely be dry that's why whenever someone has um constipation during the course of excretion blood streams like blood will be coming out even there's a way you will use a tissue paper there blood will definitely be coming out so now imagine if friction occurs do you understand so if friction occurs there will definitely be tear I know what happens when there is tear blood comes out it's tear it bruises do you understand so that's why we say it is way too risky because a lot of fluids helps in the quick transmission of this virus so now are we going to just fold our hands and watch this go on my suggestion if you not allow me to talk no i'm going to be sharing with you the preventive measures you, which you have to adopt while you go about with the anal sex now the first lady is calling you come i want to help you first of all is lubricants yes you should ensure that you use your lubricant and water-based lubricant not oily based lubricant where, where they focus me like that because you know i'm going to mention condom and all you doesn't go together with condom because the both of them are slippery and they are two walls apart so you cannot combine condom and oil based lubricants so always go for water-based lubricants continue second one is use your condom and use it correctly remember not expired and not broken mm? so that is it for that how many have i mentioned Three. lubricants condom and now we'll also advise you go for your prep you know the essence of prep if you don't know your partner's health status if you have multiple partners or if you have a partner that is hiv positive always go for your prep and for you to be on prep you must be hiv negative and you should always be ready to assess your prep in case if there is any exposure during the course of the moment do you understand so the last preventive measure we'll have here is avoid chemsex 
Mm? You know, Kemp says that is having sex under the influence of alcohol because we've come to realize that most people they feel like for them to get to the climax of the moment, they prefer to get drunk. <laughs> Hey. sweetheart that is not the way it was because anything can happen your condom might even break and you won't know or the person might go against your consent doing what you guys didn't agree on at the end of the day huh, i don't know how you're going to take it so it's better for you to have sex with your clear eye do you understand have one with your clear eye do what you want to do that point good that way so just on a very nice but being under the influence of alcohol to have sex that is a no no hey, thank you so if you've been practicing it all this while you just have to stop it and yes it's always ideal for you to know your partner's health status I hear your voice again i am going to divide you into four and make sure that you are dead okay i believe i've done justice to this topic so guys if you feel you actually learned something new today if you feel you enjoyed the video that you just watched please don't forget to leave a thumbs up don't forget to like don't forget to share don't forget to follow and don't forget to subscribe i don't know where you're watching from be it from youtube whatsapp instagram anywhere you're watching from please don't forget to support by doing the netful thank you so much i still remain your darling girl fashion nora and do have a blissful week ahead Mwah.